Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video where I review your projects, resumes, portfolios, and now sometimes LinkedIn profiles. In this video, I'm gonna be reviewing Tala's GitHub profile. This is just a clean GitHub profile review. I'll probably dive a little bit deeper into some of his projects as well. Special thanks to him for submitting his work. He's got a lot of really cool deep learning projects and he's competed in quite a few Kaggle competitions with these. So I think that this will be a little bit different some, than some past reviews because of that focus on the deep learning element. I'm also feeling pretty good. I just got this new haircut, so I was really excited to make a video. So if you like it, let me know in the comment section below. In addition to that, if you'd like your projects, portfolios, resumes, or LinkedIn pro profiles reviewed, please let me know in the comment section and shoot me an email at kenji.ds at gmail.com. So without further ado, let's jump in to Tala's GitHub profile here. So I like the picture here. I think he has a good statement. Those are always the first two things that I look at. Let's go to the overview of his profile. It seems like he's pinned a lot of relevant projects here, although all of these are focused on deep learning or image classification. I think it's important if he wants to get a deep learning job, this is totally fine. But if he wants to get a general data science job, maybe he should feature some projects that are a bit more, uh, that have a bit more broad appeal. Some EDA where he uses different methods. I would say that less than half of the data science jobs out there do you really do um, deep learning on the job? Most data scientists really don't even touch deep learning, which might be a surprise to you, but that's very common in the field because of how broad the field of data science is. So showing a range of skills can be really important. Now he's very active. He's averaged almost two commits a day on GitHub, which is something that's really good to see over this really long period of time. So, you know, one thing I always recommend is just to be consistent, to use GitHub a lot, to code a lot, to do data science a lot. And that's going to be one of the best ways to really accumulate your skill set, accumulate your knowledge and to, to not get rusty. I, I've gotten a little rusty even now. And if I find myself working continuously through a week or continuously over months and months, doing a little bit every day, I retain my skills so much better. So. I think that in general, this is pretty good. He could perhaps, like we saw in some other videos, put a little landing page for his GitHub. That's something, again, I still have to do on my GitHub profile. So um, that could be something that just adds a little bit more flair here. But let's go into a few of his projects. So the first one I saw that was interesting, I think that this was the first one. It's his most active repo is his coronavirus uh, data set one. I believe this is from the Kaggle competition or, or this one, I believe this was also posted on Kaggle and the author of this workbook, it looks like was able to get right here, 98 point, uh, F1 score of 98, uh, 0.983, geez, where, um, where Tala was able to get an F1 score of 0.981, which is really good. I think it's important to have a baseline for any model that you do. When I do some form of regression equation or a classification equation, for regression, I usually use a very simple multiple linear regression to baseline everything. And for classification, I usually use a naive Bayes or just a logistic regression to baseline everything. And all of my improvements are based on that very simple model. You can also go the other direction where you're looking at the best performance and seeing how close you're getting to that benchmark. Sometimes you can even exceed that, which is a really cool feeling. So in this case, he was really close to what the high end baseline is. And I think that that's really impressive. What I, I really like also that he has this, um, this table where he talks about the results of each of the, I guess, folds of validation. Um, he also, again, has the same thing for the CT scan data set. I also like that, again, he brought in these two different data sets and was able to evaluate these things. It would be very interesting if they had this data for the same patient 
and we could see based on the two models if they could predict it with if they had if they could predict that they had coronavirus with even more accuracy that might be something that would be really really compelling although he would have to be privy to the data here finally he cites this i believe that this is his own work that he's citing so let's see what that looks like do Okay, so he published research here, which I think is awesome. Um, you know, this is something that if I were him, maybe I would even just take a picture of this abstract and put it in there. So this is really impressive. And if I recall, he's a biomedical engineer. So this combines his current work with the data science skill set, which is exactly what you want to be doing. If you have an existing skill, let's say, you know, I did that interview with Daniel Burke where he's got a great background in nutrition and health, and you can combine it with data science, that makes you, you know, so much more interesting as a data science candidate, because you have that subject area expertise. I cannot stress enough how important subject area expertise is. There's this concept called, I believe it's the Dilbert principle, where if, you know, for example, I am never gonna be the greatest a data scientist in the world, right? There's so many people that have put so much more time in and are so much more interested in improving as a data scientist than I, than I am, that I'll never reach that pinnacle. But if I combine data science with sports, I'll probably be a lot closer to being the best in that field. And if I combine it with, you know, another discipline like, uh, you know, being on YouTube, I might be one of the top couple who are covering those three domains. So the idea is that, okay, if I focus on data science and nutrition, or I focus on data science and biomedical engineering, I can be in the top, you know, 10% of those things. Whereas a data scientist, I might be only in the top, uh, you know, 40%. So the more you specialize in these specific domains, the, you know, the higher you, you <clears throat> the higher your skill set rises to the top. So I'll get off my soapbox and keep going through this, uh, this review. So I think he could probably visualize this data a little bit more, maybe show an example or two of what the x-rays looked like. Any more context can be really relevant here. Um, also, any other resources that he used, any other authors that he saw could, could provide value here. In this, you're telling a story. I'm sure he had a lot of other information other interesting information that he was able to come across in his paper. Since he wrote research on this, he can also just copy and paste some of that into the description here as well. So let's go into one of the actual notebooks. Um, that was not the thing. So he uses TensorFlow and uh, it looks like trying to see what infrastructure so he does he should be building some plots here um, okay so I w again would have liked to have seen him show a couple of the images but it looks like he used uh, Keras sitting on top of TensorFlow to build these models something he could really improve on is how he commented his code here you know he does say that this is made to be uh, to reproduce his results and if you want to make it even easier to reproduce results, you would comment very well. So he could explain why he chose the specific architecture here, what different things that he tried. Obviously he used a custom loss function here as well. So talking your way through the project and commenting your way th through the project not only helps you reproduce your work later, but it also helps anyone else coming through understand the decisions that you're making. When an interviewer or a manager is reviewing your code, they wanna know why you made certain decisions at certain key points. So a key point would be, okay, why did I decide uh, to comment out this dropout layer, for example? Or why did I choose the size of the, the different layers, how I did it? So any decision that you make that is not obvious you should be explaining why either in comments or in plain text 
Aside from this, it's pretty straightforward. He just runs this quite a bit. <laughs> um, and again, he got very strong, positive results here. So I think that was a really good project. There's a lot of examples of what you should do there. Let's move on and see how some of his other work stacked up. So in this next one, I think at the very least, you know, this is a little sparse on the README. I think some of the other ones are a little sparse on the README as well. At the very least, you want to have some sort of table where you're showing performance like this. I think that that is totally fine. There's another one that I saw. So again, a table where he shows the performance. That is the very lowest bar that I believe you should have. Uh, I would also really like to see him explain a bit more about why he's doing some of this research, why it was interesting to him. You know, maybe from an academic setting, that isn't that doesn't matter quite as much. But if you're really trying to connect with an employer, trying to get them to understand how you think, it does help to give just a little bit more context there. All right, this one I thought was interesting. So he does plant leaf disease classification. Again, a lot of image classification um, projects. Image classification, deep learning, these are all really strong on your resume. These can turn a lot of heads, um, especially if you can explain deep learning models well. So one thing I would stress when you're doing any of these projects is if you can explain how your project works relating to deep learning to a recruiter who is not, who doesn't have an incredible amount of technical understanding, that's an impressive feat and that's something that you should really focus on doing because the recruiter is going to have an opinion of you and if you're talking over their head, they're probably not going to have the best things to say uh, to the hiring manager or whoever is listening to this next. So definitely make sure that you have very easy to read graphs, you can explain these things very clearly. Um, and this is a very good graph. I, I actually even more so than the visuals that we saw before, just the graphs, I, I mean the, um, the tables, I like seeing graphs like these in a, uh, in a readme. So he has the results, the data set reference, he's checking a lot of really good boxes here. Um, in this one, he might want to just talk a little bit more about what the data set is, rather than just referencing where it's from. So let's actually look into this workbook a little bit more as well. So this one has just a little bit better markup. So he's using some of this stuff. Uh, still could comment quite a bit better. You know, a, a perfect example would be in the first base model. This is not what we want to see, right? Where the training accuracy is going up and the uh, testing accuracy is steadily going down. That is textbook overfitting right there, right? We wanna explain exactly why that is. Is that related to the learning rate? Is that related to you know, something in the model? What should we change? What are we gonna do to correct this going forward? Um, and I don't think I see anything related to that here. Obviously he fixes it and proves things, but we do want to explain why things are going wrong here in the first place. So that would be something that I'd want to understand better. I'd want to see uh, from him here. So, um, you know, again, we have this results page and I, I think most of them are fairly consistent going forward. So he probably, I think he, okay, this is a good example of a background. So I think he probably took this background from the Kaggle competition or wherever, and that's totally fine. So if you're struggling to figure out a reason why you should do this project, look at the prompt in the Kaggle competition. I mean, as long as you cite it and people know it's from Kaggle, I think it's totally fine to have that in there like this. It just gives a little bit more context for anyone reading this. I would think about all of your projects like you're telling a story to the recruiter, you're explaining step-by-step step how you went through it, what, but you're starting with your results. Uh, and the overview. And people in general just respond so much better to stories. That storytelling element is gonna show through in your interviewing as well. And I mean, the whole reason we're doing these projects is to give employers an idea 
that you could do something similar when you're working for them. If they don't understand your work, if they don't understand how it's documented, if they see anything wrong with it, they're going to assume that you're going to do that same type of work at their company and that's probably not desirable. So you just want to make it as clear, as easy to read, as intuitive and as well documented as you can. That's probably like a no brainer, but I figured I would just beat it to death anyway. So I really like Tala's work. I think he's doing a great job. My high level recommendations for his profile would be to have a couple projects that are a bit more focused on visualization or showing that he has a diverse set of skills. Maybe going in and talking a bit more at length about why he's doing some of these projects, a little bit of the background for them, and also to really comment his code a lot better. I think he's doing a lot of things really well. These projects, you know, admittedly are probably more advanced than a lot of the things I'm doing. I don't do a ton of stuff with deep learning and um, I, I will be uh, in the probably upcoming, I will, I will be in the upcoming months because, you know, NVIDIA was nice enough to send me this week graphics card and I'm really excited to use it. But to this point, I mean, this is really, really advanced and good stuff. So kudos to him. I hope that this review helped you guys understand a little bit more about how to frame your projects in your GitHub portfolio, how to talk about your deep learning projects, and also how to, you know, go about building a connection with a recruiter or manager through what they're seeing in your portfolio here. As usual, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.